difficult your job is. Um, I, I am really worried about a case involving a whistleblower um, at TSA. And what is really upsetting to me about this particular case, as you know, there's been a lot of coverage about morale at TSA and problems of drugs and drinking and inappropriate behavior. Um, this is an actual complaint that was investigated by uh, the Office of the Inspector General at Homeland Security. And th this activity predated you, so I, I want to be clear about that. But following this investigation by the IG, four charges were brought against an SES employee, including poor judgment for maintaining an inappropriate relationship, basically lying about an intimate and sexual relationship during the investigation, inappropriate conduct by violating hiring practices, and there's more details there, unprofessional conduct by um, forwarding an email to a subordinate employee in which he referred to an assistant administrator in an inappropriate language I won't use in this hearing. So um, what was really most concerning about this OIG report, and I've got the report here, and I'd like to make it part of the record just so we have it, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's, uh, without objection, I hope. Without objection. Um, but what is really scary about this review is that they found a series of deviations from standard policy in terms of how this was handled. In allowing the employee to receive unusually favorable treatment. And as you know, one of the biggest problems you have with morale is the rules have to apply to everybody. OIG specifically identified three member, members of senior leadership at TSA that interfered with the disciplinary process in a way that promoted favoritism. This was the deputy administrator, the former assistant administrator of the Office of per Professional Responsibility, and the current chief counsel. So imagine my surprise when I find out that we're working on this and who's in charge? The chief counsel. And by the way, the table of penalties required that this SES be removed according to the table of penalties at TSA. Instead, they offered a suspension, permitted the employee to continue to receive the same salary that he was receiving. Um, the, the ranking, excuse me, the chairman of this committee and I um, have sent a letter to you in February asking about what disciplinary actions have been taken against the senior leadership that interfered in a disciplinary process involving a complaint by a whistleblower that has been investigated by the IG and found to be valid. Um, and I'm particularly worried that we put the fox in charge of the hen house if this chief counsel that was part of the problem is cited in this report is in fact the one that is supposedly now helping making sure this doesn't happen again. So I, I, you're welcome to take this for the record, Secretary, if you have an answer today, but this is why you have bad morale. I, I would like to get into more detail either on the record or, excuse me, to take for um return to get back to you. But let me just say this. Uh, whistleblowers need to be protected, uh, period. Uh, the IG needs to be listened to. Uh, the IG serves an extraordinarily important function, particularly at a department the size of DHS. Uh, I would say that if a policy is such that a person who is part of the complaint is then put in charge of rectifying the situation, that is wholly inappropriate, I will for sure look into that. You're right, that's, that's not acceptable. Uh, and accountability. You've heard me say it many times before. The vast majority of people, men and women, who work at DHS are dedicated professionals. When something like this occurs, we need to all hold them accountable as a community. It's as simple and as complicated as that. It needs to be done. I'm not as familiar with the particular one, but I can guarantee you I will look into it and get back to you. I would love that. And I should just tell you that this staff of this committee has been talking to a number of whistleblowers from the uh, Federal Marshall Program. Um, did I say TSA? I didn't mean TSA. It's the Federal Marshall Program. Oh, I see. Okay. If I said the wrong thing. It's this, these are all the air marshals. And it, there is, you've got trouble there. Um, there is uh, inequities that are occurring. There is favoritism that's occurring. There is abusive behavior that's occurring. Um, and we have got a string of whistleblowers that have been coming to us about various problems. So 
Um, if you would get back to us specifically on this case involving an investigation by the Inspector General as it relates to the Federal Air Marshal Program. Um, and uh, we, I would like your take on, now that you've been there a short period of time, but nonetheless long enough, I would like what your view is of the Federal Air Marshal Program and whether or not it's being utilized effectively and whether or not we are um, putting marshals on the right flights. Are we putting marshals on too many flights? Um, you know, I've always questioned some of the procedures because, you know, flying back and forth to D.C. on commercial airlines as often as I do, for many years it was really obvious who the marshals were. They were the two guys in jeans that got on first. You know, and so if there was some effort to, you know, have them intermingle and be effective at, you know, detecting and shutting down, it was like, okay, everybody's standing in the line at Southwest. All of us, they were waiting to be herded on, standing by our stanchion. And well, there goes the marshals. They're going to load us pretty soon. And it, you know, then I would say something. Had the marshals gone on yet? And they, everybody would look at me like I'd said a dirty word. Oh, what, what are you talking about? What are you, like it was some secret. So it just has always worried me that, we are not staying on top of what is the most effective way for us to put security in the air. And I would love your take on that at, from your view as the Secretary of Homeland Security. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, what, we've, what we're in the process of doing with the administrator right now is actually looking at that full program. You know, how should it work? Does it make sense? Is the modeling right? Uh, the example that you're using, uh, is, at least as I understand it, was a procedure under the belief that deterrence was the most important. So to some extent, if the marshals were obvious as to who they were, there would be a deterrent value. Well, shouldn't they have been in uniforms I, then? So I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just yeah. explaining as I understand yeah. it. But your point is valid, which is as long as we're resourcing this way, we want it to be effective. Uh, so we, the administrator and I are happy to come to touch about our initial findings and what we're looking at but yes it needs to be looked at from soup to nuts to make sure that it's effective yeah and, and we'll be glad at the appropriate time to share with you some of the whistleblower investigations that are ongoing but I would like your specific response to that uh, IG investigation where people in the highest levels of management were um, skewing the process in favor of somebody that was a SES as opposed to someone who had been abused 